Hello everybody, welcome back to Getting Ready for Third Grade Math Like a Boss. I'm Miss McCarthy, I'm here to teach you what you need to know to be a pro, to be a boss, when you head into third grade. Now it's not everything you need to know as a third grader in math, but it's like the top eight skills. So today, we're going to work on division, division, there you go. Um, and I think it's great, so if you're coming from your classroom, Hello, if you're coming from home and you're studying over the summer, what's up to you? You are a boss, my goodness. And if you are watching from your mobile device as you're riding around town with your family, that is awesome. I mean, you should be spending time with your family, but if you're choosing to, to learn, I'll take that. I'll accept that. So, um, yeah, so let's get to it and let me teach ya. Ba -ba 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 boss notes. All right, so today we are going to be working on division, like I said before, um, and you see a multiplication right here, multiplication sign. That's because I want to make sure that today we relate the re re relate the relationship between multiplication and division. They do have an inverse relationship, kind of like addition and subtraction. You can check your work for subtraction through addition, where well, you can check your work through division through multiplication. Enough with the finger nonsense, Miss McCarthy. Let's get to the notes. So we've learned in the past that the factor, write this down in your boss notes. I don't have boss notes yet. There's a link in the description box below. Take that link. It'll take you to where you can download this whole workbook that includes tons more problems that I'm not even showing in the video. So for you to practice and so make sure that you get that then you'll have your boss notes. Factor times factor equals the product. We've learned that. I know. Go ahead and write it down again though just so we make sure. Um, we also know, I'm going to write right below here, not on this line, but right here, that the number of groups times the things in each, we've been calling that tie, equals the total. We know that for multiplication. Okay, well now we are switching up the order a little bit for division. So when we divide, this is the division symbol right there, when we divide, I need to make my, multiple, my um, equation sign a little bit bigger there so you can see. When we divide, we have, we're taking the total, write this down here, because we're going to write something else up there. We're taking the total and dividing it by the number of groups, or, big or, the things in each, to get the things in each, or number of groups. It could be either or. So if we're searching for the number of groups, we're finding the things in each. If we're searching for the, or if we're dividing into the things in each, we are looking for the number of groups. So you'll see that. But these these terms, I love these blanks up here because they have fancy names, okay? The first one, the total, we call that the dividend. Dividend. Write that word in there, dividend. Okay, the dividend, that's the total amount that you have. And you're taking that total and you're dividing it by the divisor, divisor, the thing that's doing all the dividing, okay? Divisor, to get, and this is a fancy word, we're finding the product for multiplication, but for division, we find the quotient. So you'll see in your workbook that it says to find the quotient. So those are the boss notes that you need. All right, here we are at the learn it section. We're on problem number one. The directions say to find the quotient, that's the answer to a division problem, and to model using a drawing, which I want you to do for right now. That way you understand what is going on here with division. So we have 18 in our div dividend divided by 3 as our divisor. We're finding our quotient. 
And the 18, the first number for the division, is always going to be our total. I'm going to put a T there for our total. Okay, there's 18 things total. Now, we don't have a word problem to tell us what the three represents. Like I said before, it could be your groups, your number of groups, or your things in each. So for this one, I'm going to choose to have three be the number of groups, which means we will be looking for our quotient of our tie, our things in each. So what I'm going to do is draw three groups. One, two, three. And I'm going to spread out or divide 18 tally marks into those three groups to see how many things in each. 18. So one, two, three, nice and neat, four, five, six, nice and neat, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Now since I'm at five, I'm going to go ahead and slash through. Thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. Nice and neat. Don't go all crazy and put your tally marks everywhere. Be nice and neat. That way you can clearly see what is going on. So how many things in each? How many tally marks in each? I've got six here, six here, and six here. So the answer is six. All right, folks, we're on number two for the Learn It section now. Um, we've got 35 as our dividend. It's also our total amount divided by our divisor, seven. And this time I'm going to choose for seven to be the things in each, which means we would be looking for the number of groups. I'm flip-flopping what I did last time. Because for division, we can choose when we don't have a context, when we don't have a situation telling us which one is which. So I've got 35 things total, and there's seven in each. So here's what I do. Looking for the number of groups. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's one group. Eight, two, three, four, five, oops, five, six, seven, that's 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, I'm almost at 35, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, boom, okay, I put seven things in each. Count it all the way up to 35, and how many groups do I have? Uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco. Cinco is five. That is our things in each. That's also our quotient. Moving on. Oh, we are moving on. And it's your turn now. So, you are going to complete numbers. I think it's three. Yes, three, four, and five on your own. Try them. See if you can do it on your own right now. And then, of course, come back because I'm going to do them in just a second. So try them on your own. See if you got it. And, yeah, that's all I got. Go try it right now. Pause. Boom. You're back. I'm so happy about that, even though I look like I have a sad face. I just missed you. Okay, so you should have tried this one on your own. 45 divided by 9 equals what? That's our quotient. We've got our... What's this called? Our dividend divided by our divisor equals our quotient. Okay, the first number represents the t -t total. Very good, the total. Okay, now you may have choose the number of groups or the things in each. So shout out what you chose. Awesome, okay. I'm going to choose for it to be the number of groups, which means this would be my things in each. Excellent. Okay, so if I have nine groups, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine groups. So now I have how many things total? Oh yeah, 45. And what do I do with those 45 things? Right, I take them and I just start spreading them out. I'm going to count them, put them one in each circle until I get up to my total of 45. So count with me. Now, wait. Should I be like super messy? Or should I be nice and neat and organized? That way I can see precisely what my quotient should be. Right. I should be nice and neat and organized. So let's go. Count it up to 45. One, two, three, four, five. 
6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. I'm going to do this again to be nice and neat. 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, and not my favorite because I'm at 5, 37, slash, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, Woo! I got all the way to 45. How many things in each? Five. Five tally marks in each. So my quotient is a five. Is that what you got? Okay. Number four, everybody. Seven divided by seven equals what? What is our quotient? The first number is called, though, what's the fancy name? Dividend divided by the next one, which would be our divisor. And then this is called the quotient. The first one represents the correct, the total. Now, what did you choose? Shout it out. Did you choose to have the number of groups or the things in each? Cool. That's awesome. Great choice. I'm going to choose to make this one, though, the things in each. So I'm going to write down tie, which means if I'm looking for the, if I have the things in each and I know the things in each, then that means I'm looking for the number of what? Groups. You got it. Number of groups. So seven things total, seven things in each. So here's my group. I'm putting seven things in each. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's a group. However, when I put seven things in each, I automatically went to my seven things total, because here's seven things total, so how many groups did I have? Right, I only had one group. Okay, so now you know whenever you have the dividend and the divisor the same, the answer is going to be one. And to check it, one times seven equals seven. Do that again, inverse. One times seven equals seven. That's how you check it. Next. Last one, number five, we have zero divided by three equals what as our quotient? The first one is our dividend. The second one is our divisor. And then the third thing that we're looking for is our quotient. So T, total. I'm going to choose for this to be the number of groups again. And this is going to be the things in each. If you chose to flip-flop those, that's cool. We don't have a word problem to put these in, so we get to make the choice. Okay, so how many groups do I have? Three. Three groups. How many things total? Zero. I have zero things total. That means I don't have anything to put inside. So if I have nothing to put inside of my groups, how many things are in each group? Nothing. You may have been stumped with this one, but that's okay. Okay, now you know what to do. So whenever you have a zero, just like whenever you have a zero as a dividend, you know that your quotient is going to be zero. Okay, so you, if you see that later in your workbook, you'll know what to do with it. Don't be scared of the zeros, guys. They're not scary. Today's B message is to be humble like a boss. When you are humble, that means that you are putting others and their feelings before your own. Let me give you an example. Let's say that you get an A on your test or maybe like a first place award in some kind of competition. Okay, the opposite of being humble would be to stand up in front of everybody and say, you know what, I am so awesome, I got an A, I got first place, what did you get? Not an A, not first place, booyah! Okay, that is not being humble. A humble person would accept their award or their good grade, you know, celebrate it on the inside, and maybe share it with their family or close ones later on, but not, not bragging about it. Okay, so you want to make sure that you are humble, that you don't look like a boaster or a bragger, that you accept what comes your way and that you thank those who help you get there. So remember that guys, be humble like a boss.
Getting stronger.